Hi, my name is Jason Ristein. I'm the Next Generation Lead Editor. I'm here with a couple of other uh, members of the team. Hi, my name is Cindy Wu. I practice at UNC Chapel Hill in North Carolina, and I'm also a proud member of the Next Generation Editor Board. I'm Karen Lerung. I'm a Chief Resident at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. Again, I'm also very happy to be part of the Next Generation Board. And I'm at UCLA, and today we're going to discuss a few topics. We want to talk about what it's like to start practice and going through that. And then we also want to talk about uh, whether or not to do a fellowship and, and uh, with how you start that process. And I hope you find it uh, informational. Hi, uh, Jason Stein here again. And I have uh, Karen Leong here from uh, uh, Providence, Rhode Island at uh, uh, Brown University. Um, she's uh, going to apply to a static fellowship uh, and uh, thought it would be great if she could share her experience a bit with us. So uh, go ahead. So what was it like trying to, uh, you know, how would you come to doing a static fellowship in the first place? Well, Jason, thanks for having me here. Yeah, um, so I have actually already obtained my fellowship with Dr. Daniel Mills next year. Uh, the process was it's a little disorganized, I have to say. It takes a lot of initiative if you go out and you contact these uh, fellowships on your own and you obtain the information and you build a spreadsheet, I think is what most of us do and try to compare. And what I, uh, what I recommend you do is to utilize your mentors. Uh, they're the ones who know your strengths and your weaknesses, and also to go out and visit these people. I think uh, a personal face-to-face -face contact is that much more important than what you can do over email or through your phone. Yeah, if you have the opportunity to do elective, by all means. Um, what's is there a list of all the fellowships that you were able to find? Because you know it's got to be daunting. How do you know you know where to go or where to start? Absolutely. So I recommend you all go to ASJ to the site, and there should be a link there that will link you to the list of uh, aesthetic surgery fellowships. This is also available through the um, www.surgery.org site. Yeah, so so there's a there's a whole list for all the fellowships and you can kind of run through that and obviously location plays a factor and then uh, again, talk to your mentors and as far as who they recommend and, and where you know some of the good training options would be. Um, so what made you first even consider doing an aesthetic fellowship? Again, mentors. I have excellent exposure in my residency to cosmetic surgery. They're the ones whose lifestyles I really envy, and they're the ones who are doing the most cutting-edge surgery in my program, and you know, I said, why not? Yeah, I think, I think we all appreciate the art of uh, aesthetic surgery. Um, I think, you know, it's very appealing, and I'm glad you, you found it. Yeah, thank you. One piece of advice for junior residents, if you're interested, start early. Uh, my fellowship director is looking for his 2018 fellow, so if you're looking now, start in your fourth year. Yeah, and I think Grant Stevens just announced we had a dinner with him last night that he already uh, filled his 2018 fill up. So you got to start early. That's our last uh, closing word. So thanks so much for. Thanks, Jason.